he was pleased that CPS today backed down from CEO Claypool's February 2nd announcement to discontinue the pension pickup in 30 days. The pension pickup is part of the status quo that CPS is required by law to maintain during bargaining. And unilaterally discontinuing the pension pickup would surely be illegal. We regret that it took the threat of an unfair labor practice strike to induce CPS to reconsider for now its ill-advised action of enforcing a 7% pay cut on teachers, paraprofessionals, clinicians who have borne the brunt of the horrific attacks against their profession and the students in their classrooms. Unfortunately for us, and as many of you know, CPS has a credibility problem. We do not trust what they say. We only brace ourselves for what they do. Mr. Claypool has rescinded his threat today, but he is clear that he will enforce a 7% pay cut at a further date. This is unwise and not productive towards concluding a labor agreement. Therefore, this unfair labor practice remains unremitted. The working conditions in our schools are directly tied to the learning conditions of our students. We are dealing with unclean schools, and our most vulnerable children are without school nurses. High school seniors have no libraries, and yet they are required to do endless test prep for CPS imposed standardized tests and to prepare themselves for the SATs and the ACTs. Children are exposed to ever more violence and prolific poverty, and yet there are few counselors to help guide them through these traumas. Students are exposed to the rise of homicide rates, still show up to school every day, and they bring with them their sorrows, their fears, their anger, and despair into the classroom. Principals have been forced to cut staff to bare bones, and therefore class sizes have been allowed to grow and, to a certain degree, balloon. All of these cuts, reductions, and actions by the mayor's hand-picked board of education are punitive. They do nothing to improve the quality of education that we are able to offer more than 350,000 school children each day. These budget cuts, furloughs, or as they're also called, layoffs or reductions in force, and a refusal to honor steps and lanes are all short-term fixes. What about next year? CTU finds itself inside a scenario similar to the movie Groundhog Day, where we keep waking up to the same mess every single day and we have to do something different. Vulture capitalist Bruce Brown has purchased the governor's chair, and he is committed to gutting not only collective bargaining in Illinois, but specifically to blowing up Chicago public schools. We do not take his threats idly. Rauner's already shown us what he thinks of child case workers, low-income parents, working class families, state university students, the elderly, the disabled, and the indigent families of the dead. This governor has become a true enemy of the state. While CTU is buoyed by the Illinois House of Representatives' successful passing of the elected representative school board legislation, 110 to 4, let's just do the math, we hope that the Illinois Senate does what is just and passes it as well, making Chicago catch up with the rest of the state. We deserve democracy and we deserve it now. So with these continued threats to our working conditions, learning conditions, our most vulnerable students, and our pay, and our benefit, the CTO will continue with the April 1st day of action against the austerity agenda. So April 1st is a showdown for a fair contract. April 1st is a showdown for progressive revenue for our schools. April 1st is a showdown for our students and our parents. April 1st is a showdown 
for communities. April 1st is a showdown for equitable funding and good governance. April 1st is a showdown for education justice. This is a showdown for every single teacher, paraprofessional, and clinician who is dedicated to their craft and who rises each day to provide instruction and education nurturing to our students. And we will join with anyone who believes it is time for us to unite, <coughs> unite to fight, to fight Browner, Rahm, and the Ken Griffins of our state who are united in a Trump-like campaign to turn back the hands of progress and destroy public education in Illinois and most definitely Chicago. Thank you. Questions?